Good morning, Elmira Baptist Church. You're probably wondering what happened to me. Usually this update is done on Thursday mornings. Well, yesterday morning I was gone up to Sacramento for a meeting of the Capital Connection, which is a group of pastors trying to uh, stay on top of what's happening in our state political system so that we can keep you informed, know how to pray, and have the appropriate impact as we should in our republic. I'm going to leave that topic for another time. Uh, you are seeing probably the only part of this church building that is not decorated, and you're in for a real treat on Sunday. I hope you'll be able to join us in person so you can see all the uh, decorations that I'm seeing. Uh, fortunately, or, well, unfortunately, whatever, they left this part of the uh, front here undecorated, but the other three walls are completely covered. There's things hanging off the ceiling. You've got to see this. It'll be, you don't want to miss it. Be here on Sunday to see that. It is Friday, not Thursday, Friday, June 10th, 2022. And I want to start with a quote from Arthur Ashe. He said this, True heroism is remarkably sober, very undramatic. It is not the urge to surpass all others at whatever cost, but the urge to serve all others at whatever cost. I was blessed by that. I have a big request for those of you who serve here at Elmira Baptist Church. I'm asking you, if you serve in, in the, the sound room, if you serve helping with Amoeba, which runs the live stream, if you serve in the nursery, if you serve as a teacher, Sunday school, junior church, children's church, the adult uh, classes, if, if you serve in the ministry, music ministry, playing one of the instruments or, or leading songs, I'm asking if you will be 15 minutes early before your responsibility begins. So if you have a responsibility at Sunday school, if you can be here at 930, if you have a responsibility at the morning worship, if you can be here at 1045, ready to take on that responsibility. This will be a big help. Uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of moving pieces, even in a church like ours, uh, not a huge church, but a lot of moving pieces. And when someone is not in their place, that ends up having a domino effect. And sometimes people are, are coming in right as their <clears throat> responsibility starts and not realizing that someone else has had to take over some of that responsibility. There's a second reason, and that is a lot of times there's set up to do. I know in the sound room, for example, you just can't walk into the sound room, turn everything on and be ready to go in one minute. And then if there's any computer hiccup or uh, sound unusual, event then it takes usually three four five minutes to resolve that so if you can be 15 minutes early that would be a great help to us again 15 minutes early before the responsibility so you can be set up and ready to go now this coming Sunday I want to finish the sermon I began on a prayer for God's presence we looked at primarily the first five verses of Isaiah 64 we're going to look at the last seven verses of Isaiah 64 this coming Sunday, so you can read ahead and be ready for that. And then in the evening, we want to recognize our graduates, honor our graduates. And I'll be preaching from Psalm 127 uh, regarding children, a gift from God. So come prepared for both of those messages. Here's our upcoming schedule. Tomorrow, we're going to do Vacation Bible School Blitzing. We're going to take our invitations and just leave them at the home. We're not going to knock on the door or ring the doorbell. We don't want to even wait that long. We just want to leave an invitation at each house and move on. We're going to start at 9 o'clock in the morning because it's supposed to be blazing hot again tomorrow. We don't want to be out in the heat. So 9 o'clock tomorrow we'll do that. And then we'll do that VBS Blitzing again on the 18th along with a work day. If you can come out and help me with final setup for our program that's going to begin on that following Monday. So that's on June 18th. June 19th is Father's Day. I want to encourage you to invite a father out. Or if you are a father, invite your son, sons, daughter, daughters out. See if you can invite someone out there for Father's Day. And then our Vacation Bible School runs Monday, June 20th, through Friday, June 24th. And then on Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, June 26th, we're going to have a final program in the evening, 5 o'clock in the evening, inviting the parents to come out. Kids will present some songs, some verses, some different things. We'll look forward to that on the 20, 26th. Uh, because of that, Wednesday, June 22nd, 
we're not going to have a Bible study. You can come and help with the VBS program. Or if you'd like, you can come and pray. I'll set aside a room where you can pray. But that is on Sunday, excuse me, Wednesday, Wednesday, June 22nd. On Wednesday, June 29th, this is the Wednesday following our Vacation Bible School program, we're looking forward to a group coming from Maranatha Baptist University to sing to us. This is called the, and to present music to us. This is called the Heritage Singers, and they'll have the whole program. We're inviting the children to come on in and hear that program as well. That is on Wednesday, June 29th. And then we're going to take our Food and Fellowship from June and our Food and Fellowship from July, and we're going to combine them. One, Food and Fellowship on July 3rd. That's Sunday, July 3rd. Now, if you can help me also with the prayer list, we have a prayer list that comes out every Tuesday afternoon, but it all, and we use that on Wednesday night. And then Cindy updates that and sends out a, a prayer list in that weekly email that you receive on Thursday. She also reprints that prayer list so that it can be updated for those of you who come to the ladies' Bible study on, on Friday or if you pick those up at church on Sunday. So if you can get us your request by Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock, that enables us to get that list done in time for Wednesday. And then we'll include whatever requests come in on Wednesday on that updated list that will go out on Thursday. And you can contact Cindy directly. That's the easiest way to do it. If you do contact me with a prayer request, remind me to pass it on, pass it on to Cindy. Let's open our Bibles. Genesis chapter 25. One more thing about those prayer requests, especially those things that are on the list of sick and those things that are on the personal list. If you would keep us updated so we know how to pray specifically, and also sometimes things get resolved, an illness, someone gets better, you're traveling, you return from your trip, you're asking for prayer for a personal request and that gets uh, answered, keep us updated. If we don't hear anything for three or four weeks, we'll probably take that off the list to make room for the other things that are coming. So keep us updated if you, if you would. Genesis chapter 25, I, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned this topic of abortion and this topic of when life begins. And I had some feedback that was positive, and I want to address some of that here from Isaiah, not Isaiah, Genesis chapter 25, verses 21 and 22. Genesis 25, 21 says this, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Now, notice just from these verses a couple of things. Number one, life comes from God. At this point, Re Rebekah and Isaac had been married about. 20 years, Bible chronology there, about 20 years they've been married, no children. And they're beginning to think they'll never have children. Now, of course, we know God's promise to Abraham that through Isaac, he'd be the father of a nation. But uh, Isaac finally goes to the Lord and prays about it, and God grants life. Many years ago, I was talking with a Mormon. Uh, he was trying to explain to me how we could be God's. And he said to me, well, how many children do you have? I said, four. He said, see, you created life. I said, no, 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 you missed it. I didn't give those four children life. God did. Now, we know the biology behind it. I'm not denying that. But it's God who gives life, number one. Number two, we see that these two, Isaac, not Isaac, Esau, Jacob, these two are described as children while they're still in their mother's womb. They're not even born yet, and God calls them children. Look at verse 22, and the children struggle together within her. Children. Life begins while these babies are still unborn, while they're still in the womb within the mother. Number three, we see that God had a purpose for these two, even before they were born, God already had a plan for Esau and for Jacob before they were even born. 
So God gives life. That life begins before the child is born. God has a plan even before the child is born. And this is why we reject abortion as a solution. Because children are not a problem to be solved. Pregnancies are not a problem to be avoided. They're a gift from God. In cases of rape and incest, yes, we emphatically state that those crimes ought to be prosecuted. If a child is conceived because of rape or incest, that's not the child's fault. Eliminating the child doesn't solve the problem. Again, the child is not a problem. It is a gift from God. It may be that the mother needs to put that child up for adoption. And as a church, we need to be sensitive to that and, and rally around these mothers that find themselves in difficult pregnancies and be willing, as God lays it on our hearts, to adopt children. But abortion is not the solution. Abortion is not the solution when God grants us a child that has congenital defects. I have a friend when, before she was born, her mother was told, this lady, this girl that you're, that you're carrying is going to be born with Down syndrome. You should just abort this baby. Well, the mother chose not to do that. This young, uh, this girl was born, she's not young anymore, but girl was born without Down syndrome, perfectly normal. What if that mother would have heeded the doctor's advice and ended that girl's life before she was even born? I, I have another friend, they do have a Down syndrome son, and he has brought such joy to that family and such joy to me, personal friend. The solution to these problems is not the elimination children because children are not a problem they are a gift from God so keep that in mind as people discuss abortion with you children are not a problem we're not trying to solve them we accept them as a gift from God we'll talk more about that Sunday night but remember that this Sunday is your chance to worship the Lord the one who gives life remember if you have a responsibility be 15 minutes early to Sunday school at 9.45, or morning worship at 11, or evening worship at 5 o'clock. Hope to see you there.